In the children's novel Danny, the champion of the world, beloved British author Roald Dahl tells the story of a nine-year-old boy and his father as they attempt to take on an evil landowner. Published in the United States by Alfred A. Knopf in 1975, the book takes place in a rural area of England, where Danny lives with his dad, William, in an old converted gypsy caravan behind the auto repair shop William owns. Danny treasures his relationship with his dad, and the two often spend their days together in the shop, with Danny viewing himself as something of a master mechanic. Then, Mr. Victor Hazel enters their lives, which could change everything, unless Danny, champion of the world, can save the day. The story opens with Danny sharing the details of his life up until the present time. His mother died when he was just four months old, leaving William to raise Danny as a single parent. Though their circumstances may not, on the surface, seem ideal, Danny loves his life. He reasons that no little boy would turn down the chance to live in a caravan and work alongside his father. However, shadows soon cast themselves over Danny's idyllic life. He learns that not everyone is as kind and good-hearted as William, namely, Mr. Hazel, the mean, rich, beer tycoon who owns half the property in town. Also, William has a secret he's kept from Danny, William, like his own father before him, is a poacher, illegally hunting pheasants from the nearby wood. Long ago, people were poachers out of necessity, if they didn't steal pheasants for food, they'd starve. Now, however, it is a thrill sport, an adrenaline rush to which William has grown accustomed. And he's not the only one. Even some of the most respected townspeople, including Sergeant Samways of the police department and physician Doc Spencer, have enjoyed poaching. Danny begs William to let him go along on a poaching trip, but William says it will happen in due time. Late one night, William does not return from a poaching expedition to one of Mr. Hazel's properties. Danny goes to the property and finds William caught in a trap, a trap designed to catch poachers. Danny helps him out of the trap, and Doc Spencer comes to tend to William's broken ankle. As William convalesces, Mr. Hazel is planning his annual pheasant hunt. This is something of a social event, drawing nobility like dukes and lords, as well as other wealthy businessmen and society bigwigs. Despite his own experience in poaching, William views the pheasant shoot as cruel and barbaric, causing the needless suffering of animals. He tells Danny that he wishes he could poach all the pheasants in Hazel's woods so the hunting party won't have anything to shoot. This inspires Danny to devise a plan. He suggests that they feed the pheasants raisins spiked with trace amounts of sleeping pills. With the sleeping pills prescribed by Doc Spencer, Danny and William put tiny bits of the tranquilizer into raisin after raisin. They then go into the woods and feed them to the pheasants, eventually netting 120 sedated birds. William thinks that this staggering number must be a record high for pheasants poached in a single trip, so he dubs Danny the champion of the world. Soon, a local taxi driver, who is also a poacher, ferries Danny, William, and the mass of dozing pheasants to their friends, the Reverend and Mrs. Clipstone, who keep the pheasants for the night so as not to arouse suspicion. The next day, Mrs. Clipstone sets off for William and Danny's with a baby carriage full of still tranquilized pheasants. But before she gets there, the pheasants start to wake up. Dazed and confused, they fly out of the carriage and mass and block traffic in town. Into this hubbub, Mr. Hazel arrives in his Rolls Royce. The birds descend on the car, damaging the paint. Mr. Hazel orders Sergeant Samways to get the pheasants back to Hazel's wood. However, the police sergeant cannot be sure if the pheasants belong to Mr. Hazel, or if they have come from somewhere else. As a solution, they agree to chase the pheasants away and see which direction they fly. If they fly toward Hazel's wood, they can go with Mr. Hazel. But if they fly in another direction, Mr. Hazel cannot legally claim them as his own. When they chase the pheasants, the birds take off in the opposite direction of the woods. Outraged, Mr. Hazel storms off. In the end, six pheasants die from sleeping pill overdoses. 
The group decides that Sergeant Samways should get two of them, the Reverend and Mrs. Clipstone should get two of them, and Danny and William should have the final two. The story concludes with Danny and William going into town to buy a new oven in which to cook their spoils. As they walk, they make plans to go trout tickling in the woods. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.